Okay, I'm Tim Dermock, and this is Georgina Speaks, and I was totally not ready for this. I just told Martin that, but he said hit the buttons anyway, so I guess we're starting. Yes, we are. So, <laughs> Good morning, and uh, welcome to the new lockdown in the uh, York region. Good morning, uh, Martin. <laughs> so, a couple of things. Um, I wanted to, a couple of housekeeping items, that I always call it, but just some things I wanted to get out of the way. Um, didn't you tell me recently that Rabbit died? Yes, uh, yeah, I did. Rabito, yeah, the hair, the hair bar barber. Rabito, uh, yeah. everybody, I, yeah. everybody ever said rabbit. I didn't even yeah. know his name was Rabito. <laughs> eh? So, yeah, he cut hair for how long here? Oh, I'm sure, forty or more years. I, yeah, I, I was going to him. My son went to him. Everybody, I mean, almost everybody from yeah. from back when I ever talked to used to go to him. So, yeah, he was uh, so rest in peace and all that stuff. Yeah, that's it. yeah. You know what? He was a, a, a businessman in this community for a long time, and. Uh, you know, kind of kept to himself up there in the north end by Church Street in, in town. Cut yeah. every, all the, like a lot of the seniors' hair there from all the buildings around there. Yeah. And, uh, you yeah, know, nice enough guy, and uh, sorry to see him go. Yeah, he yeah. used to be right on Church Street across from... Well, he's been all over Church, like Church Street right up at the Queensway. He's been in yeah, three yeah. or four different shops there over the years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he's in a different shop now. <laughs> so if anybody's looking for a haircut, you know, you can't go there anymore. So no. there you go. Be that. The other thing, um, I, was, I was digging up some old stuff regarding seniors. And uh, I don't know if you remember, but in the, um, when I was in Toronto in 93, and I was, I was doing my recovery from my own issues and stuff, addiction and all that stuff. And I had come to my attention that there was a need for a conversation for family members and friends of seniors that were enabling their addictions in homes and in, uh, and at home and and the the logic was well you know they're this old now you know did better just get them a bottle and let them as opposed to recovery senior and, and in those days seniors didn't uh, people from that generation didn't talk about stuff so they, they they had no way of accessing any recovery so anyway what happened was I put a bunch of uh, documentation regarding that the uh, leading authorities in Canada. And I sold a bit of advertising, just enough to pay for a publication, and I had it circulated to, and I kind of tricked the Toronto Housing Authority into <laughs> allowing me to distribute it. They thought it was a great idea, sent me the addresses of all the buildings, and I, I can't remember that they did actually tell me, make sure you send it to us first, but I just went around all the buildings and distributed it, and, <laughs> and so that was like 19,000 people, whatever it was. So that was kind of cool, and then out of that came... Um, a thing I did called uh, Heritage Videos. Yes, and, I remember you doing those, yeah. Yeah, and so I had interviewed like a ton of people at the time. Then uh, Dick Ellingsworth was probably one of the more known ones around here. He's the ex-mayor of Aurora. Mm -hmm. Really well-known and beloved, actually. And so I, I interviewed him for his life story. And it was really neat, you know, he was talking about being in bombers in the war. Remember, you know who used to talk about being in bombers? Remember Len Reitman? Yeah, Len, yeah. yeah. yeah, he, yeah. he was actually quite influenced in your life when you were younger, was he not? Oh, yeah, I've, I've known Len since I was 14 years old. Yeah. Len and Gale. Now, rest in peace again. Yeah, yeah. rest yeah. in peace again. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I remember Len saying where he was on D-Day. Yeah. Then went the day he found out and uh, that the war was over. He was in a bomber coming somewhere, either coming home or whatever. And uh, So, anyway, my point is that um, I had done that a fair bit. And then I, um, I got busy back in the building houses because it wasn't equitable to do it, and so in the end. But I did want to say um, it was very worthwhile. I loved doing it at the time. And um, anybody who has a family member that they would like to have their life story, like a senior, somebody who's 80 years old in your family, 70, 65, whatever, I'd be more than happy to do a few of them for free. I, I just... Yeah, and this is a great platform. What we're on right now, it's not too difficult for people to to do this while we're you know we're sitting yeah, here doing I mean, this. It's using pretty, the I same platform, it's yeah. Easy. yeah. <laughs> and for anybody that would like to attend during that, I, I have a third iPad, so we could do a three way recording of, and I can, and I'll finish it, uh, edit it, or get it all onto a memory stick and hand it over uh, to the family member. And uh, if you do it, you'll be shocked at how much uh, a senior will talk about every detail of their life back then. Yeah. You know, I remember, yeah, we lived down on so-and-so street and Jack next door and what we did during Hurricane Hazel and I remember, yeah. the, you know, <laughs> where they were when John F. Kennedy, you know, like all that stuff. It was a really interesting uh, process. I loved doing it at the time. And uh, so if anybody has a senior member, I'd be more than happy to do that.
Well, my grandma used to say, and uh, you know, the world's the best teacher. And boy, you can't get anything more about the world than from seniors because they've, no, been, been, they've been through everything and they've done everything. And, and boy, you get their experiences help you. you know? Most our parents and grandparents were born eating bread that was cooked on a wood stove, using a horse and buggy or in a horse and cutter in the wintertime. I think I'm still driving one of them. <laughs> yeah, I was going to tell you, it's time to upgrade yeah, there, you know, Martin. Anyway, you might yeah. want to step, step it up a notch, eh? Yeah. So, yeah, and the thing is, is uh, so the, that's the generation that we need to learn from. That's the information that will provide us with some kind of guidance about what way to go forward because all the technology in the world, which I might add, they went from horse and buggy to, yeah. <laughs> to what we're doing today. And the... Um, they're the ones that will give us the information that we need to know how to move forward and how we move forward will have nothing to do with the technology no. but more and everything to do with how people deal with it and those people know they went well, through always have been how you deal with it i mean you know whatever. exactly the <laughs> acceptance of whatever the situation is and then what do i do from here and and that generation they went through <laughs> world wars yes. depression you know like all everything they, they yeah. And, and to, our, to our credit and to their legacy, even in this pandemic, I have to say as Canadians, I'm, I'm pretty proud of how we have... have and there again, the seniors now are going through this again, because yep. uh, nobody can see them and blah, 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 you yep. know, and no matter where they are, it's tough to, to do that. And they're going through it again, and, uh, you know, and I guess they might be uh, almost used to it by now, but it's yep. still pretty hard on them, I'm sure. Yeah. The, uh, so anyway, if you have a senior member in your family, just send me a text or message me on Facebook or get a hold of me. The um, and so I'll go from there. So that's that. All so right. the other thing is um, <laughs> not the other thing, the thing. Okay. <laughs> that's you know at the forefront. These, um, as you know, I'm I'm in the process of challenging the town on a number of ways that they're handling the waterfront property, the indirect waterfront properties, right from Church Street all the way up to. They always act like they're not doing quite so much, but when you see what they're publishing, you can see the land is theirs and they want it. That's what they're saying, you know, we own this or whatever. And, uh, and the catalyst behind it. And um, I'd have to say the mayor is driving this bus and uh, Andrew Biggert, the town lawyer, he's driving the plow that's clearing the road, right? <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, what they're doing is unethical. It's, it's totally illogical. And based on the history of what's going on there, and then I, and now, you know, I, I think you actually brought this to my attention, and it's your fault I'm having to do all this. That's great, yeah, I, yeah. So I want to thank you for that, Mark. Well, you're quite welcome. <laughs> so um, I guess um, I'd sent I sent a, an open letter to the council, right? And uh, the the thing about what we're doing today is I just wanted everybody in the town of Georgina to know what's going on here. And, you know, this is a few hundred people that own these properties all the way up the lake, all the way up to Jackson's Point. And so right now, you might live on Walter Drive. You might live on McGowan or Warden, or you might live over here on Old Homestead. <laughs> so you think that that's fine. And you might even believe, you know, that something should be done along the lake. But make no mistake about it. This is the mayor. She wants those properties. The mayor and council. Excuse me. I think it's the mayor, but it's... You know, council voted on right. it, so that's fine. Yeah, and they they want those waterfront properties now. She wants to say we can we own the lake, right? So make no mistake about it. If there's a walkway going by your house, a uh, wetland over here, and they decide you want your property, it'll be you they're coming after next. Right. Uh, that this everybody needs to at least you know be aware of this hundred thousand or more that the town spent on it so far. The history of the evolution of this whole thing on a number of occasions with a number of legal opinions have indicated what they're doing now is not possible and somehow the current lawyer for the town has got council convinced and he said categorically, I know that we own over 90% of these properties. So what I would like him, council, and the people of Georgina to know I looked into it a bit, and there's at least 30% of those properties minimum, and I would say probably more, but I don't want to be like him and say, oh, we own the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at least 30% of those properties have title issues. Yeah. A number of people along them have actually had their titles absolute. They've had their titles put into land titles, and you know right, yeah. how that works. If you, um, Well, part of that process 
is petitioning the town yes. whether yeah. or not they have an ownership interest. Yeah. And they've responded, no, we were not exercising. So back then, when we had normal people running the show who were not trying to do what they're doing now, some vision or something. I got some vision for Georgina. I don't know what the hell. I don't know what happens to politicians when they get into those situations and they get thinking that they're going to affect that kind of change. They might even think that they're doing it for the good, but it drives me crazy. Yeah. When well, they, we're talking property rights, and we've already kind of discussed that a few times. And it's, not yeah. good. It's, just, it's not good to mess with them, and if you are going to mess with them, you should know what you're doing. You know, or you could be, start. A, be accurate in your projections anyway. Yeah, they may be under a little pressure from the uh, the region to get some of these things done too, so we don't know all that. But it doesn't really matter. It's still still the yeah, same. Yeah, it, it's still the right? same show. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, no, no, the, I, I appreciate like I have, yeah. I appreciate input. Yeah. On any side. Yeah. You know, I want the truth to come here, and and I I was I was up to it this morning, going back over some of the documents because I had to be really clear in my thing, and so. What I have done in the last week, I'd say, I've called a number of people that have been, been active with this issue in positions of authority over the years. And, uh, and I asked them, you know, am I losing my mind? Like, am I, <laughs> I mean, this kind of stuff, I love pursuit of justice in, this, in, in the legal arena because it's an, getting, getting the light to shine on it. It's not that easy once you get there. I mean, getting to the point because they got all kinds of legal obstacles they can throw up, especially when they're wrong, which they are here. Yeah. So now... Publicly, they say we own it all, and we're going to throw you off the property and tear down your boathouse yeah. in a council meeting. Yeah. And then you read the minutes of that meeting, and none of that's in it. Yeah. Which in itself, I think, is illegal, immoral, if not illegal. Yeah. And then <laughs> when they publicly they say, "Oh no, no, quieting of title. This is what we're doing." Blah blah blah. It's not. <laughs> so they're saying one thing and doing another. They're saying whatever they need to do. She's driving the bus. He's driving the plow. And they're going to get to their destination. That's their opinion. And I, I, I just I need counsel and the waterfront property owners to know that the only way this is going to happen is at the end of a superior court process, probably. And uh, if a judge says what they're doing is okay, and the reason I, I do that and, I, and is because in that council chambers, her and counsel run the show. They, they take nothing into consideration when it comes to people's concerns. They hear it at the obligatory public meeting yes. for input, public input, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Next. You know, that's, that's their idea of public input, allowing someone to say what they have to say at the podium. And they just do it because they have to, and then they got to get it. Nothing people say. And the reason I say that is because a lot of very knowledgeable people with years, decades of experience in this have spoken at that podium and not a single concern even addressed. Just they were allowed to finish speaking. Oh, okay, that's nice, you know, next. And then... Well, even we got a good example of that, the wetland deal up in, you know, the North Carolina very thing. I'm, you know, I'm not really up on it, but, you know, I think everybody kind of got heard, but just basically ignored. And then it uh, finally, it came to a head and, uh, you know, now, now it's not happening. That's, you know, and, and, yeah. they, and the residents, in a sense, won that, that, that battle. And, uh, and so here we go again. <laughs> no, yeah, and I don't uh, even want to bring up the Parker Law Dam. Yeah. Yeah that you know what happened there yeah it's kind of funny because the mayor sat on the uh actually on the board of the conservation authority and, and kind of acted like well i have no say in this you know we have to wait and see what they say but anyway i don't want to get down yeah, no, there that's and, another thing but i'm just saying that, that no, I, uh, you know I when you say people are being hurt well you know i'm sure more than one or two people got up and talked about that uh, and yeah. it didn't have any effect on them you know so yeah, yeah. people have made up their mind and yeah. and uh it's insane. What they're doing right now is insane in terms of the path that they're choosing. The, the desire to resolve all of the issues with the lakefront, that's real mm -hmm. on both yeah. sides. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, the, and the 400 people that formed the Residents Association to help work with the town on it, and then they formed an ad hoc committee, and that was their biggest mistake. If I belonged to that ad hoc committee, I would resign right now, not... They, they did. They they tried very hard. The people on that committee tried very hard to work this all out, and and the mayor just laughed and said, "Great, we'll take your offer here," and then come back like almost like they admitted that was the town owned it. Right, right. Yeah. Like that's insane. And uh, anyway, so 
the um, I, I've, I've let the town know they have 20 days from the time that my lawyer sent them a letter. And um, it will end up in my lawyer's hands eventually. But right now, for now, I am going to file a small claim uh, on behalf of uh, a few of the property owners. Right. Who, if they succeed, will accept an equal portion of whatever the small claim allows, you know, thirty-five thousand, and it'll. It, and the the issue of that particular legal proceeding will be the devaluation of the property that resulted from that lawyer's statement. Right. We own over ninety percent because I happen to know he doesn't. He's wrong. Yeah. And he can't say I know. He didn't say it's my opinion. And then in the same meeting, while he's telling all these people that showed up. People that that mayor and councillor, they're the ones that that mayor and councillor is supposed to represent. These people who pay the highest taxes and have been Georgina since its inception. And he's there telling them, because that's who it was for, we know we own over 90%, number one. Number two, we can't just sell it to you. We have to do an appraisal because council doesn't want to be seen as imposing their own judgment. Right. But don't worry, after the appraisal comes in, if it comes in at a million, they can apply their own judgment and bring it right back down again. That's what he said at the meeting <laughs> because the mayor wanted these appraisals and he's the one who provides you with the rationale to do it. So that's done. And then he went on to say, and if you don't play ball, we're going to rip your boathouses down and we're going to take your docks out and fence your property off because we own it and they don't. This was disgusting. I mean, and this is the people who showed up in, in uh, good faith. Yeah. Anyway, so... I will be moving on to the, a small claim and uh, to start with, to, and, it, and it'll allow me the opportunity to get some of the issues into the courts right away. And, and it's not as cost prohibitive because the only, re you know, the only reason that people haven't even objected to this is because it's horrendous cost and it's a horrendous thing to embark upon when your town is trying to steal your property and use your own fear to do it. Because if it wasn't for the fear of that, you know, as well as I do, well, you've been around for a few challenges and neither, uh, for this waterfront stuff going on. So for sure, they're going to be challenged, that's for sure. And they're going to be challenged in the higher court with the judicial review eventually. But right now, I want the issue of that. And I'm going to name in the claim the uh, the lawyer himself yeah. because I he didn't say it's my opinion. He, did, he said, I know, and, that, and, and I, uh, I know. It's not my opinion. I know that at least 30% have title issues that have not been, the majority have not had their title tested. And I went over the decisions again last night, and huh, the Rusty Russell report, which is nine, which pretty much is what he said he's relying on, and I did a couple searches, I think he said, and, he, and Rusty Russell himself in a letter says, south of the Varney, his, his opinion doesn't even apply. So, and... You know what? I, I'm not going to go on about this any longer. I just, right. I just want to make it really clear. I want the entire town to know that I've, I've tried exhaustively to get the town to consider what it is that I'm saying. And much like all those people that stood up there and had addressed the concerns of that meeting, the mayor and council thinks they don't have to listen because they've already skated past it. Right. And they're right, they can already talk about ownership. It's bleeding into, it's bleeding into departments in the town, and it's bleeding into other other administrations. I've gotten some responses that reflect the town's current view and opinion. Right, right. And so, and so that's you know that it's very important to challenge for that reason as well. And um, yeah, it's just insane. Yeah. There was something else, but I you know okay. getting old, I'm getting old there. <laughs> yep. So. So we're ready to wind that up then? Well, I was waiting for you to have some comment. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that, you know, I don't think you are losing your mind about that. I think that uh, it's a very important uh, issue, the you know, property rights. We've been talking about it for a couple of podcasts now. And it yeah. appears that you're taking some action that, that may at least stop or at least get people to stand up and relook at it. And that's what we really need to do. And, and you know, and, and a calmer head should prevail, I would hope. Yeah. Uh, you know, because if they can get together with the uh, the property owners and make yeah. make a, a reasonable deal for everybody, then that's the whole deal. That's that's what yeah, you want. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, yeah. And it's, I, and sometimes, as you know, you kind of have to force their hand uh, because they, you know they rely on their the lawyers and, uh, and and consultants and everything to give them their 
uh, what they their opinions or some some sort of facts about what they think they should do. Yeah. And in this case, it may be slightly flawed. So I I just think that uh, it's time to get everybody at the table again. And uh, and if it takes a, a couple of uh, of those things, and as you said, yeah. some people who have actually already certified their title. Um, and you know, so um, and, I, and I have no idea how many there are, but yeah. I mean, this walkway is not going to happen on those properties, and uh, uh, because yeah, without some sort of well, a, they, they a shouldn't deal, even be. Know. They should have. This is what should have happened here when they realized that all the residents formed an association and was willing to work along. Right. What they should have done is ordered the ordered the R plan to establish all the pieces of land, right. so, so we know what we're talking about. Yes. Yes. The reason they didn't do that is because then everybody could see where they stand and they could see where the edge of the town's actual property is. So, as soon, and then it, once they identified it, then the, then they would have to identify, okay, we want to keep these ones. Well, see, I don't know how they can almost, in, in that case, I don't even know how they can actually identify it in some senses because because of what we're saying. Like some people say it's a 50 foot road allowance or just a pathway. Others say it's 60, they know that. 66 feet. So which, which, how many R plans do you need? I mean, depending on what rule you're looking at. Yeah, well, <laughs> they know that. They know already. Council, right in that meeting, Waddington, God love you, uh, Councillor Waddington, because he had the courage to at least say, do we actually know that we own these? And every councillor said in that meeting, a resounding no, and that's not in the minutes of that meeting either. It's right. kind of funny. There's a new number. I started going over the meetings now, right. and watching what happened. It's uh, I have a boring life. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> but I got to tell you, the uh, you'd be shocked at how much takes place at meetings. Actual concerns that are raised that go against whatever it is that the mayor is pushing today. That doesn't get recorded, so that there's no record that somebody opposed it in any of the minutes of the meetings. You know, and if you didn't watch those tapes, you wouldn't know that. Is, but I've I actually have a few instances that I'm bringing to somebody else's attention on that, on the issue of uh, what they're doing is correct or not correct under the municipal act. You know. Yeah. Do you actually have the uh, tapes of uh, that lawyer saying all that? Do you? Yeah. Have, well, you know, maybe we should uh, just uh, do a couple of clips on this. Uh, not this. I've, this, this podcast, I've posted them all on Facebook. On Facebook, but I'm just wondering if uh, maybe as an interlude to one of our next ones well, or something, we'll just do a couple of clips. Yeah, you know? we're gonna. Yeah. So, no, no, we're we're gonna return to this. Yeah. I guarantee yeah. you, we're going to return yeah. to this, and the uh, and I just want everybody in Georgina to know that whole uh, lawsuit that almost killed me that I won before that you had to listen to me phoning you every other day saying, Martin, "Am I losing my mind?" Remember that? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. and I, and I got to tell you, I'm grateful that you were there at the time yeah. to tell me. Maybe you might want to tone it down, Tim, but no, you're not losing your mind. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe you might actually your biggest concern in those days, uh, you know, God love you, was. Uh, Take care of yourself, Timmy. This will take care of itself. You know, but you know, make sure you stay grounded because it's not good for well, your health. Lot, and it was a lot of money for you too, and uh, to do that. And uh, yep. I was kind of concerned about both of those things. But uh, anyway, we uh, the, everything passed, and now and it's all this. Yeah, yeah, and we all know how that one ended. The re the reason I and the only reason I bring that up is to be clear. Oh, oh so <laughs> there's, I, I, I rem that's why I keep talking because then I remember why I went into the other room. Yes, you know that. <laughs> You ever go into the other room and not remember? Yes. I yes. take my guitar with me now, so I got something to do until I remember, right? <laughs> uh, so anyway, the um, the towns I, I the towns responded to the town lawyer responded in one day to my lawyer, and he used all soft language. He denied that they're characterizing it as ownership, even so that's the town's response. So then I sent ten applications into the to the clerk, in which she gave to Dave Redding, Dave Redding, the CIO, and uh, by the way everybody in Georgina. The, town, the staff gets a pass on all of this. Yeah. Anything that goes on, the staff gets a pass on. 99% of the time, they're all doing whatever the regulation says, doing whatever the direction of council is. Right. They have no choice in this. No. That's their job. And, <laughs> you know, and, so, and here's the other point. When I go up at that building counter, you know, Rod and... Uh, <laughs> Rod Larimer, the chief building official, is saying, there's the regulation, there's the building code, you have to follow it. Yes. And Harold's backing them up. And so I go to engineering, and Corey and the rest of them are saying, here's the regulation, you have to follow it. I go to Jeremy, and he says, no, 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 this far from the lot line, this is what the regulation says, and I have to follow it. They all make me follow it, God love them. Yeah. If the regulation changes, I get a break. If I can work it out, they make me follow the law. 
Of course. Yeah. Council might want to do the same thing. Yeah. You know, follow the law. And they're, and they're not. They're just taking full advantage. So I intend to do the same thing to them. Well, huh? I mean, what, you're, what the whole thing will be is a clarification of what's going on. Like, and what property owners can do and what they can't do. And well, what the town can do. They don't want that clarification because they would know that they, don't, they haven't got a leg to stand on. And uh, so that's really important that that comes out. And I just wanted to stress that point about staff. Yeah. It's very important. And... Um, a little shout out to the economic development department because uh, I have been following them on Facebook, and when you know I tend to be you know skeptical of that kind of stuff and and the glossy you know. Yeah, I think you mentioned it last podcast that the town had given up some money for for local. Well, there's that yeah, that, yeah. that they're they're administering that grant that the government gives for for business who are having trouble, but the actual economic development department and their Facebook page, right? They've given a lot of support to local businesses to highlighting. You know, and things that are opening, you know, the farmer's market, different farmers, different businesses, the pizza, you know, different things. So I just, they're doing it, they're doing a really good job. And I had to just, you know, acknowledge that because I tend to, I tend to light, uh, talk light of those efforts. And uh, they, they did a really good job all ever since this pandemic. And, and, and so they should, I mean, that's our, the heartbeat of our community is all the businesses, you know. Yeah, and, well, you and, know and, me and, yeah. and, and, you know, people in positions of authority, I'm always right, I'm always a little skeptical, but uh, they did a really good job this summer, Excellent. so I just wanted to mention that. That's good to hear. So we're going to be back here probably really soon. I'll okay. have some more information <laughs> by the end of the week. I have a couple of people that have individual property problems. Right. Like that apply here. Yes. That are, I, I've, I've sent them to see somebody. So I'll have some information back. And, I, and then as I'm taking on, as I'm, not taking on and I'm not supervising or anything to do with any people's individual rights as I'm getting involved with that in support of their efforts with their lawyer right then I'll have some, we can talk about that I'd like this to become a very public issue yeah and, and I appreciate you working along with me on it hey, no problem no and it should be out there and I'm sure all the the property owners have, you know it's a good venue here for that yeah and hopefully a few of them are actually listening to some some of the things that we're saying and yeah uh, uh, at least if they can say, hey, we're, we've got a, a forum that we can discuss all this uh, reasonably, yep. and we're doing that. Yep. Um, and so it, it should be just it should be a good thing over the next, uh, you know, who knows, few months or who knows, hopefully not years. Yes. Uh, you know what? <laughs> if council if council went if they rescinded what they did, yeah, the re and rejected the report that they passed to receive, if they threw the appraisals in the garbage because they're totally inapplicable, and and if they just acknowledged that maybe they could have done this. I mean, we all have things that we have done that we, when we look back, I probably could have handled this better. Yeah. Well, that's all. I don't care. Right, wrong, blame. I don't give a damn about any of that. So we're, like, the, we're the hindsight crew then, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah 2020, eh? We're yeah. driving 2020 here and uh, backseat driving all day long. And uh, yeah. but, but this is a justice issue. Yeah. And what they're doing is totally, they're, huh. I'll never forget sitting in Tim Horton's Donut like four months ago with the mayor. And I kept asking her, and I didn't keep asking her, I brought up this whole situation. Because I've been watching it for three years, and I can't figure out why haven't these people, you know, objected to this or got their lawyers involved? Like, why isn't, what's going on there? And I, and I had people review the, the original decision that they're relying on, the Rusty Russell decision. And I was told, that will not stand if it gets challenged, period. It's, it's, it's just the documentation says it won't stand. It's an opinion, and it's a starting point, clearly. And... Uh, she said, yeah, but I know nobody's going to challenge it. Like, she knew everybody's afraid of spending 100 grand, and that's the basis whereby nobody's celebrating the fact that somebody won't stick up for their rights so you get to do what you want. That's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, and being happy about it, yeah. I don't even want to go there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, psychologically. I mean, that's pretty sad. Anyway, you know what? Thanks so much for taking the time, Martin, and uh, thanks for your support and all of this and the research that you've been doing for me, and I... And uh, not for me, for them. Yeah, of course. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Martin. And we'll uh, sign off. Yep. To see you guys later. Yeah, you're telling, telling me to stop talking? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.